Glad to have your company tonight. My name is Olive Nete. Now to the news in details. President Paul Kagame has noted that women are an important pillar of Rwanda's development and that the progress of women should not be hindered by things like gender-based violence. The head of state made the remarks as Rwanda joined the rest of the globe in celebrating International Women's Day. We have this, uh, the details with Serge Hore. Thousands gathered at the BK Arena in Kigali to mark the day and welcome the president with cheers as Rwanda prepares to mark 30 years of liberation and the end of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Events His Excellency Paul Kagame noted that women played a crucial role in. Women played a role in the country's development, but what came first was their role in building up the Rwandan family. That is the reason we were able to reunite Rwandans, to rebuild our country. A big role became evident among Rwandan women. But even before that, during the struggle to liberate this country, women also played an important role, as it was noted earlier, because they were present on the battlefield. As for the rest, we are all aware of it. Women are parents who care for children. And I almost added that they take care of men as well. That is the reason a woman is called the pillar that supports the home. The president also spoke on the issue of gender-based violence. Also on the issue of gender-based violence, that is extreme. That should never happen, and it certainly should not be tolerated. Let me also stress that women should not tolerate it. There are a few women who may tolerate it because of the past, thinking that they should accept anything that comes their way, or that a man has the right to take out his anger on a woman. I do not believe that to be part of our culture, and it certainly is not a sign of progress. So where did it come from? How can a man strike a woman? Why don't you go out and try your luck among other men and see what happens? <laughs> during the event, the atmosphere was that of celebration, with songs popular during the last presidential campaign period sang and expressions of patriotism witnessed, as well as confidence in the country's ability to defend itself against any forces that may seek to destabilize its security. Women's role in governance here in Rwanda has continued to be evident with 61.3% of all parliamentarians female, 42% in the cabinet, and 30% among district mayors. Still speaking of International Women's Day and women's development, women have been using the opportunities available to succeed, not just in governance, because you will see female success stories in all sectors of the country. President Paul Kagame has urged women to have the confidence to see such opportunities and to continue to strive to make a difference in all walks of life. <laughs> The country has different sectors, all supposed to play different roles. Let me start with leadership. Things like politics and more. When it comes to decision-making that has national implications, that seeks to develop the nation, you cannot hold back women. We therefore call on women to play their role and realize that it is your right to do so. Become leaders and do not do so as women, but as people who have the right to be there. When you are in such positions, remember to remedy any restrictions against women and understand that the remedy will not come because you are a woman, but because you are rightfully in that position. The president also stressed that women are exceptional, carrying out multiple responsibilities that only they can best fulfill and gave an example of his own mother, recounting how as four years old a refugee, he relied completely on his mother for survival. More than half of Rwanda's population is made of women, and between 2019 and 2023, the percentage of women studying ICT in the country's colleges and universities increased from 32.1% to 44.8%. The number of those studying sciences increased by 4.3%. Between 2020 and 2022, loans awarded to women in the financial sector increased by 43%, while those provided to men increased by 16.5%.
to other matters, the World Bank affirms its readiness to collaborate with Rwanda on the basis of the most urgent need to build community capacity, infrastructure, and curb the climate change effects. Prince Manzi with more. On Friday, Prime Minister Dr. Eduan Njirene received Dr. Sao Drone Punde, the country manager for the World Bank, for discussions stressed on the partnership between the World Bank and Rwanda. Dr. Sao Drone reiterates that the partnership with Rwanda does not involve detecting what Rwanda invests in its funds. This is a partnership, it's no World Bank driving everything, so we continue to work in partnership and listen to the government, what the government priorities are, and see how best we could support them and also try to find ways of mobilizing resources, bringing other sources of financing um, from other partners and other players, including private sector investors that may want to support some of this agenda. The Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, Dr. Uzien Dajijimana, reiterates that there are various forms of cooperation between the government of Rwanda and the World Bank. Yeah, they discussed the status of our bilateral cooperation in the area of uh, intervention, which include mainly infrastructure such as transport, energy, but also agriculture, social protection, uh, education, and uh, climate. And uh, we are satisfied with the cooperation and the progress we are making in all these areas of support. The partnership between the government of Rwanda and the World Bank has been going on for 60 years, where it supports large-scale projects as a major partner through long-term loans, gifts, and other means that support Rwanda's broader development program. Back to Women's Day and celebrating Women's Day and achievements made uh, in the past years. Joining us in our studio is Mireille Carrera, Executive Chairwoman, Lead Coach at Cora Coaching and Business Academy. Welcome to our studio, Mireille. Thank you for having me. Uh, happy Women's Day, first of all. Happy Women's Day to you too. You look beautiful. Thank you, you look beautiful too. Thank you. Uh, first of all, before we, we, we engage in this discussion, mm -hmm. can you briefly uh, tell us, uh, ta tell our viewers, your achievements as a professional woman? My achievement as a professional? Wow. Uh, how many minutes do we have? <laughs> <laughs> we, have we have time. We have time. Well, um, I think I can share it this way. One as a, an employed, as a professional, and one perhaps as, a, as an entrepreneur. Um, I remember when I was still in the diaspora, one of my dreams was to work for global organizations and um, I travel many countries, so work in different countries on different continents. And I believe that uh, by the grace of God, I have achieved that. I had given that myself as a goal. Um, and that road has closed. But the other goal, which I believe is something that uh, is an achievement, is to work for myself. So become an entrepreneur, go from an employee to an employer. So that's something I've always dreamt of doing before I turned 40. And um, there I managed to do that at the age of 38. So two years ahead of my goals, I believe that um, this is something that I treasure. I treasure, I believe that uh, many people aspire to be. So I will be 48 in the next, uh, what, two months or so. So it would have been 10 years now as an entrepreneur. So going from an employee into an employer. Uh, speaking of your journey, what sort of challenges did you face in that journey of achieving the goals that you gave yourself? Yeah, so the challenges, I believe specifically as a woman, because it's Women's Day, um, but also as a woman entrepreneur, I believe the challenges I had were um, at the beginning, at the early stages of uh, starting up Cora mm. and uh, moving from where I was outside of the African continent back into the continent in Rwanda and uh, other countries as well. So the challenge was around 
um, market readiness, uh, making sure that people understand what coaching is about, uh, that coaching is not counseling, it's not mentoring, but really educating the market has taken us a very long time. It took us maybe two, three years for people to be ready to receive coaching. So that, I believe, was a challenge that obviously took a hit on the bottom line, financially speaking. So um, that, I, I believe many uh, entrepreneurs that are following us will definitely relate to the fact that when you start up, particularly if you don't have any funding, so sustaining your early stage, early startup at the beginning is certainly something that is challenging. And according to statistics, 80% to 90% end up giving up. So what I celebrate is the fact that I didn't give up and I'm still running, no matter what the journey is. That's so awesome. that I love. Awesome. In your experience uh, through that journey, how do women respond to the sorts of uh, opportunities that opens up thanks to the services Cora provides? It depends. There again, it depends if we go with the theme of uh, employee versus employed or leaders, professional women working for organizations versus those who actually own their businesses. So, um, for example, let me start with that. When people go through Cora Coaching and Business Academy's program, so what they will become is they become professional coaches. So they are able to open up their practices, they can become executive coaches, um, life coaches, business coaches, etc. So they open a practice just like a lawyer will have a legal practice or a doctor a practice. So you actually earn an income. So one of the uh, benefits financially is that you actually earn a living out of what you know. Um, but for those who don't practice that full time and we coach and train um, in organization, of course, they add value to their businesses. Uh, the culture of coaching is created, meaning that people are more cohesive. There are so many research and studies that have been done um, to actually work out the impact of coaching. Because coaching is about understanding who you are, it's about understanding where you are, how you actually perform once you know how to tap into your potential, how you know how to uh, live with others as well. So um, within organization, coaching in fact helps with uh, the culture of oneness, the culture of uh, performance and productivity. So we coach um, leaders from the board to the executive committee to um, you know, junior members of staff, helping them really to grow and more importantly, the self-discovery process of knowing that you are there to add value. Mm. So in your professional opinion, mm -hmm. how important are government policies when it comes to facilitating women in business to help them succeed? So how are policies, yeah, how government, are policies government policies important? Okay, so a disclaimer is that I've always been in the private sector, so I cannot speak on behalf of the government. So my perspective will be purely from a private sector perspective. And, um, but looking at where we are in Rwanda, I believe Rwanda really shines. Rwanda has been doing really well when it comes to policies around uh, gender equity, gender parity, uh, numbers speak for themselves and many nations really envy Rwanda for that. So I believe the government has done a lot on the political side, uh, but it's my personal opinion, I believe it's time that not only as Rwandans, but as Africans, we start owning our journey. We start owning where we are. Um, so in terms of practical things, I believe that the government perhaps could do uh, versus the private sector. Perhaps when it comes to women, maybe think about before the woman goes into business, the woman is a girl. So what type of education do you need to think about already at the primary level or even kindergarten level, primary, secondary, and I know at the university level, there are a number of things that are changing. So thinking about elements of uh, emotional intelligence so that the girl child is confident to believe that she too can achieve anything, that she too can do anything that she wants. So 
maybe adjusting the curriculum to embed uh, self-confidence, emotional intelligence, uh, over and above all other things, I believe, might be certain things that we can already incorporate in the curricula to ensure that there is no mental gap, so to speak, between when the woman leaves the corporate world or the, um, leaves school and goes into the corporate world that she believes she can't do, she can't perform. Um, if time allows, I would like to share three things that we have seen mm -hmm. that I believe through certain policies, yes, at the public uh, service level, but also private, can help address some of the gender gap. Mm -hmm. So having coached so many people, but also having seen in, um, in some researches, there are three levels that women go through mm -hmm. um, in terms of the career path and also sort of a shattering the glass ceiling, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So at the early stage, there is an issue of confidence. So um, the younger people leave university, they're starting their career, they have an issue with confidence. Am I good enough? Am I as good as the next person? Mm -hmm. So that is an issue we, we see is very common. And one of the things to do to overcome that is obviously have more discussions around, yes, you can, yes, you are worthy, that sense of it's your place, mm -hmm. sit at the table, it's your place. So that's number one, addressing the confidence issue. But the second thing, so the higher you go, you will notice, and I'm sure there are studies that show that the bigger pull from university up, there are more girls leaving university. Mm -hmm. But the higher you go, yes, there is the area of marriage, having children, and a lot of a social constraint. So the second thing is women tend to forget themselves because they have so much. So here, what tends to happen is that they tend to give up so rather than going for the executive uh, position, they actually end up staying at home because there is no support system around them to make sure that they are um, supported. So I suppose from a corporate policy would be good to have flexibility, but also, and I know Mifotra has done an amazing job with changing the school hours so that there is more quality time between kids and parents. So here, I suppose what is um, available there is just have those policies, but at the same time, at the personal level, learn to say no. Learn to say no when you feel like you are overwhelmed, so you don't forget yourself and you end up actually do more for others and not yourself. The third thing which I think is really equally important is the higher you go in terms of um, the hierarchy of um, leadership or the pyramid of leadership. So when you look at the board level executive committee heads of departments, so you will have one issue with women in business uh, or women in leadership, so that will be the issue of guilt. The issue of guilt is incredible among women. So having coached hundreds of women, including myself, um, there is that issue of guilt where maybe you are a CEO of an organization, maybe you earn more money than your husband or your boyfriend, fiance, or whatever, the people around you, and then you feel guilty, or maybe you don't spend much time with your children. So that issue, actually, I've seen has plagued many, many women, and they end up dimming their light. Mm. So I would even say, don't dim your light. Find the ways and frameworks to make sure that you actually shine brighter, because everyone around you will shine brighter. So here, that's something I've also gone through myself, and I'm not speaking out of the books and research and um, you know, what I have come across, but those are the three, three things mm -hmm. I too had to overcome um, from the earlier point I had to believe that I can, even if I lived in, the, in Europe, in the Middle East, as a black woman, formerly refugee, formerly girl, whatever category, I too had to work myself up to believe that I'm confident, I can do anything, and also I deserve it. Mm. I'm here to add value. So once you know all of those things, there is no barrier at all. Yeah. Uh, before we let you go and end this amazing discussion, uh, you spoke of empowering youngers mm. through education. Yes. But uh, there are young female professionals aiming to become future success stories. Mm. What's, uh, what advice, what sort of advice would you give them? 
Mm -hmm. So they're aiming to become successful stories. Yeah. There are two parts. It's a compounded question there. So one, I know we are in the world of Instagram and the Twitter and TikTok, etc. Don't aim to become a story. Don't aim to have the hits, the likes, etc. But aim to know yourself. So your success comes with knowing yourself. Your success comes with knowing why you are doing what you do. So discovering your potential, what you do best, your uniqueness is in fact what is underneath. That's a treasure that will actually get you to shine. So not necessarily go for the crowd, but go for why am I here? Who am I? What talents do I have? What can I do better than anybody? And that will bring confidence. Then that would make sure that you don't even see the barriers because those barriers Yes, we'll be there. They, there is no perfect world. But um, the stories, yes, it's good to tell them, but the stories are better told by someone else. So let your story be told by someone else. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for taking your time to join us in our news. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Yes. To other matters, Regine Mukairanga is a 36-year-old Rwandan referee who also officiates on the international level. This profession has helped her to achieve a lot. Today we talked to her and she told us more about this profession. Christelle Uwase has more. Regine Mukairanga played football since 2005 when she played in Gachenye team. After 2010, she stopped playing and started her referring career in 2011. Up to 2011, uh, after, after finishing my career and playing football, it's where I started my idea to be a referee. So I have been in this career since 2012 up to today, up to 2024. That means uh, it's uh, 12 years. She faced a lot of challenge as she was also combining it with school. Like, first of all, when you are going to do the test, you do the physical testing and you see how the man are learning. And they say you have to, to, to learn the same. And they say, you, you will not do this one, this one. You will not learn like them. They will use the seconds. That's why they are saying, you, you will not learn these seconds. And you try to do it. As you know, you have a, a dream or have an idea of being. But after all, she wasn't discouraged. She did it, and now she's referring in the first category. The first day, the first day uh, I was going to officiate as in uh, main league or the Rwanda Premier League. I was so happy and so excited, and I see and I say that my dream are now starting coming true. Apart from Regine loved referring. The profession has now been providing for her, and now she's able to provide for her family as well. This career helped me, oh, first of all, it helped me to get uh, some money, uh, the opportunities of communication between others, relationship within others. Uh, uh, the money I get, um, I use it to like, family issues, my, my problem, and so on. In 2022, Hajin married for stay Ayabagabo, and now they have one child. However, Regine is a referee. She also gets time to take care of her family. Myself, I program. If I have much, I do the, the daily program. Mm -hmm. This, I, I think, first of all, the issue, home issues. Then I prepare my my match. The, 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 the men, we know that you have a gender balance. Even and at home, have balance where the man can help a woman and the woman, the woman help a man. That's why we help each other in order to get there. Uh, in order to perform that career well. The women in referring profession continue to make a significant change in the history of football, where a Rwandan lady, Salma Mukansanga, was the first woman who referred the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations. She was the first woman who referred the African Men's Cup, while in 2022, French woman Stephanie Flatpart became the first woman who referred the Men's World Cup. Christelle Ouasse, RTV News. To more news on Friday morning, Congolese refugees living in the Mugonga camp of the Sagara district and Tijeme camp of Nyamagabe district of the southern province of Rwanda conducted peaceful marches to call on the international community to do something about the atrocities that have continued to be committed against Rwanda speaking communities in the DRC, especially those belonging to the Tutsi tribe. The Congolese refugees denounced the collaboration that has continued between the DRC's armed forces and the genocidal FDRA terrorist group that is determined to exterminate them.
Direction was about telling the national community, especially the UN Security Council, and the five permanent members of the Security Council. We want them to recognize our tears. We have been crying for several years. We want them to hear what we are crying for. We want them to know that we are still human beings. We are suffering here. More people are being killed there, and we want them to recognize. We want them to actually understand the injustice which is being which is taking place on the other side. We are criticizing the effort the San Sadek because the Sadek itself, instead of telling the government to, to understand who we are and even to, to solve the problem of the refugees who have been in Rwanda for several years, imagine combining the effort to help the government to kill us. When you hear the, the hatred speech being spoken by the president himself over there, what do you think the rest of the people will do? It's, it, it, if you can sit in the presidential house and you address the speech, hatred speech that we are going to kill this and this, why do you think the other people will do over that? It's about getting pangas and spears. If, as if that was not enough, they even distributed guns to the civilians. That's how the Wazarendo came into existence. Actually, we have no hope of surviving. Rwanda currently has seven Congolese refugee camps that are home to more than 100,000 people and this week peaceful demonstrations take place in them to denounce the crimes against humanity that have continued to be committed against their people back in the DRC. To other matters, as Rwanda marks International Women's Day, the investment company known as Cristo Ventures has demonstrated its commitment to the promotion of gender equality and all women by establishing breastfeeding rooms at all its establishments and affiliate offices for its female employees. Executives at the company have called on other institutions in the private and public sectors to also establish such facilities because of their benefits and the fact that they are not expensive to do. UNICEF officials present at the event to launch the initiative com commended Rwanda for encouraging women to breastfeed their babies for the first two years of their lives because of the health benefits associated with the practice. And on behalf of the technical and news production team, thank you for being part of our news today. Enjoy your weekend. Take care and goodbye.